Sí, 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 bueno, bien, sí.
Thank you. Well, For you. Good thing, Chip. Imagine by now you just love working with this system. <laughs>
It's colder than heck in here. And it's colder than a heck out in the That was a nice brisk walk. Oh, you walked up there. Yeah. Hey, uh, that little red line is about three foot six inches. You're right. Yeah. A little bit. I think they based it on going by that three digit big root there. And I think yeah. that's exactly the same. The tree. Yeah, they, can, they can maybe do a little narrow on it. Yeah. Like, and you can get I already there. talked to him about it. And, um, overall, you know, we're a team. So, yeah, Raphael is involved and everybody's involved. But oh, I didn't think about that. I kind of get things done on Monday morning and so you get the week lined yeah. out. But I remember Raphael yeah. saying, hey, I'll do that. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure he did. It's just that they've been working over on our side. So yeah. instead of having to go back and forth, we're just letting them do. I'm just recording that. <laughs> no, we we uh, there's we're on schedule, we're on plan, so it's just they're doing number one first. And if you go down that way, you'll see that they've started with the map and the. I just I, I just yeah, it really looks good. So they'll move around the corner. Then we got to figure out the pool. They're not the pool. I'm driving. Uh, Did you uh, see my account? No, I didn't. So Jim Nelson's backyard got flooded. Oh yeah, no, I I I didn't see your email, but I I've been back there and took pictures. You took me pictures. Okay. It wasn't as bad as it was. Well, but. it's been a problem, but I'm contending when the weed mat goes down. And oh yeah, no, it's no. if you look at that point there. where the weed mat is, man, it's perfect. Yeah. But it was a little late. Right. So next week, we'll get it there. I thought it was all because of the car path. That's why he got. So it makes a dam. Before. Yeah. It makes a dam. It stops the water. So I don't know if he still had the issue, but he might not have got. He might have had the issue with his clean water, not dirt. Right. Well, no, I think it's dirt back then, too, because it's kind of washing. I, 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 I didn't know I said that. Yeah. It's, it just gets down as a matter Well, we talked about it in our construction. Hey, um, coach. It's 63 in here. Okay. I'll keep it open. My hand is at least 60. Oh. It reminds me of my house, Eric. <laughs> We're watching the heat. <laughs> that was not a question. Is that that? He said that was probably all on the Zoom meeting. <laughs> Yeah, we're good. Then. We don't have any surprises. We've already addressed all these things. That's oh. that's the important thing, and everybody's on board with it. Okay. We are constant contact. So, oh, I think I think, that, I think it's great. Sorry, to I started to have issues, so I'll make sure that they get addressed. It's like that, right by seventeen. Not done. Okay, I'm picky. Our cart path, you look at it, and it's not symmetrical. It's oh. like this side wobbles, and this side is got a nice arc. And so, yeah. you know, it's not good. I check out all of them. I'm going to check off the But list. that's part of the incentive, though, they expect you going down the first hole. Right. When you get a tip, when you get settled over there, I can have you read something from oh, cool. the auditors. I mean, oh. David didn't want to be the sheriff, but I'm cool, confused by okay. it. Okay. But it's something, I guess, was discussed in May. Right. Oh, in May? Yeah. About the one of the condos and oh oh yeah 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 oh, I'm, uh, I, I said I'd bring it up and I'll read but I thought maybe this might reflect your and so this budget or this uh uh calendar yeah but I I sent you another email because oh you did no I just said Shelly sent sent that out to the whole committee and she said I want to get this out for the board agenda she goes I want to send it to the board for the board agenda. So I didn't hear anything else. That was the last email I got. So I, I don't know if all the board members got it or whatever. So I sent it again because Julian says, I'm here to get the calendar approved. And I said, I thought they were still struggling on one day, uh, one day of it. Like they were trying to figure out what before Easter or something. He goes, no, that's for this year. And I'm like, I, 
I don't remember seeing it finalized, and I don't know if she sent it out, but I, I don't know if it was my fault. I don't know. It said the, the 16th, and I thought, well, I haven't seen but it. You I saw the email. I sent it to you, right? And, I, and yeah. that's what she sent. She said, then I'll send it to the board. Yeah. I'll, I'll send it to the board. So right. I, right. Oh.
Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You in there, Dave? Hello? Dave? Yeah. You should be unmuted. Dave? He might have his camera on. Yeah. Hi, Jim. Oh, there we go. Welcome back to uh, <laughs> to home. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. There's no place like home. You go. Oh, let's see. Um, it's uh, one thirty-two. One thirty-two. Okay. Um, you know, open the meeting at one thirty-two. Uh, Mr. Julian, would you like to meet us in the Pledge of Allegiance, sir? Yes, sir. You got it. Okay. Follow me. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the flag of the United States of America. Okay, um, uh, first up is the uh, approval of board minutes. That'll be Steve Ekstrand. Uh, yes, I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, open meeting minutes from January 28th, 2023. And executive session minutes from January 28th, 2023, and February 21st, 2023. Second, second. Thank you, Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Looking for my, uh, I had one that I brought up. Oh, oh there, you there we go. Nice to um, okay, uh, any discussion? Uh, on approve? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Okay. Uh, next up would be members' comments. I believe Eddie Baxter. Yeah, I'm just going to wait until full rec comes up. Okay. All, in. all right. Do we have any other member comments? Okay. Well, let's get right on to the general manager's report. Thanks, Mr. President. Um, I want to start off with the all the uh, uh, educational. Um, class we're doing on next Thursday. It's on March 2nd at 4 p.m. This is a freebie. And uh, basically they're coming here to discuss uh, discovering the Valley's treasures. Now what Ollie is, it's a, uh, a big organization out of the Cal State San Bernardino, but they do a bunch of different trips and classes and all that all throughout the Valley. But uh, so this is sort of their, a membership drive because it does cost money once you get past Thursday's educational up here. Um, you do have to RSVP with the OLLI at csusb.edu, but uh, like I said, this is a freebie for our uh, residents, and uh, that'll be on Thursday. So I did set a couple flyers back there to take a look at that. So let's go over the financial report for January 2023. Revenue was under budget by $24,373. But expenses were below budget by $24,372, making us $1 below budget for the month. You'll see on the income statement, you will see that it shows a net profit of $138,094. But in the uh, but $138,224 that reflects as revenue in GNA was billed for the special assessment dues and then transferred into the reserves. So we do show. A, uh, a net profit at the end, but for the most part, that's what's being going into the reserves. Okay. Um, for each uh, um, group here, food and beverage revenues missed budget by $8,835, but expenses were below budget by $2,572. It's been really tough to keep up with our cost of good prices with ever changing increased food prices, but uh, for the most part, Rumbo is doing his best to keep the menu prices down. Golf shop operations overall, uh, 1,905 under budget. GNA showed an overall $5,804 better than budget. Golf course maintenance overall was 3,571 better than budget. Clubhouse better than budget by $2,283. Uh, 
MLCCN worse than budget by $4,011 and pool and rec better than budget by $435, all coming to that $1 below budget figure. Uh, the reserves for the month, zero spent in January. And at the end of the month, the reserve account balance was $2,644,946, which $266,956 still owed to the reserves for the loan. Food and beverage happenings. At the beginning of the month, we started with a new menu as well as a bar menu that is offered Thursday through Saturday. March is a busy month, so please make your reservations to help and to help us plan our uh, employees. March bingo will be on March 1st from 3 to 4.30 p.m. and a second session from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Sunday brunch, we'll have two of them this month, the 5th and 19th. Each Thursday in the month of March, we'll be, we, we'll be hosting the theme nights for every Thursday this month. Uh, the first Thursday, March 2nd, will be a steak and seafood night. March 13th, all committee members will, will be hosting the annual appreciation luncheon for all those that have donated their time and efforts. The staff community appreciates all the hard work and hours you put in to make this a great place to live. So uh, I believe that flyer has gone out to everybody. So if you're a part of a committee, please sign up for that special luncheon. Uh, annual St. Patrick's Day party will be held on the 17th, starting at 5 p.m. Open seating served until 8 p.m. that night. March 24th, karaoke comes back 6 to 9 p.m. And March 29th, we have a live band for dancing and uh, fun, dancing and fun, sort of a hybrid from our dancing and laughter evening that Dr. Rhodes introduced us to. But with this one, we'll have a live band playing. Uh, this one we're going to title Grooving Night. Don't shoot the messenger on that one. <laughs> okay, ADA bathroom. Parking lot is being graded, and I think it's almost graded and almost done there. Uh, but the contractor is having issues with Southern California Edison. Our mm -hmm. permit did get approved, but because of the lines and infrastructure that feed the end are so old, Edison will be replacing these lines sometime in the next three weeks. And then the contractor can replace the electrical panel and move forward. Desert landscape project. Well, we learned a little bit about the desert landscaping this morning. Uh, we had some heavy rains and flow of water that went into one of our homeowners' backyards. So we'll <laughs> fix that. We'll uh, we'll fix that as soon as possible. Starting Monday, we'll get down there. Um, uh, yeah, we'll definitely review this whole area and get it fixed so we don't see this issue again. Um, but the pro project is moving uh, right along. This week, the irrigation plants were set and they started laying the weed cloth. Weather permitting, they look to be finished on this project by March 10th. Under new business, you'll notice we have First Peak Coachella Valley to offer a six week program, probably two days each week, to ages five to 12 at our facility. This program will be a great way to show MLCC is giving back to the community. And all they ask is for two stalls at the range or a piece of the chipping green and some chairs to teach these kids life lessons and a little bit about golf. And then I'll end with our comment cards for the month. We would like to have our oyster crackers back, oyster crackers for Monday Bridge. <laughs> to the entire staff working the Ladies Scholarship Luncheon, great job. The Cowboy Western Buffet, great job on the ribs, chicken, and, and good flavor for all. Everything was delicious and a A plus for service. On hole number two, green, the duck and cuckoo covers the whole area. Can't we make a local rule lift clean and place? And shouldn't we shouldn't have to hit it from the poop on the ball? Um, and I got one from my staff this month. Uh, um, the staff want, want uh, heated toilet seats. <laughs> so I, I did get this one and I, I made it a little abbreviation of what went on. I did talk to the homeowner that left this one, but Valentine's dinner was slow. Bartender was backed up and way behind. And then there was a comment that uh, we should not allow smoking on or around the practice areas of the golf course if it's busy. Um, so people smoking on the 
practice area and I, those things we can discuss down the road. But um, that was a comment that we shouldn't allow smoking around the practice areas of the golf course. Yeah. Okay. So at that point, Kim, you got it. My report. Thank you. Uh, architectural committee um, really don't have a whole lot going on. Um, mainly just weeds, obviously, are <laughs> going to be an issue for quite a while. Um, so uh, do your best on that. Uh, condominium uh, report. We have Mike Livingston. Um, you want to say a couple things? Come on up. Or you can you can do it from back there. Or you can yeah. There's a whichever way. Microphone up there. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike with uh, Community Solutions. I manage the Condominium Association down at the bottom of the hill. We appreciate you having us this morning, this afternoon. Uh, $1 under budget after two months of the season. That's very nice. That's great. Just, right. put them up, just put them up to January. Oh, oh just for January. Okay. <laughs> well, we're, it's early. It's a great progress, so especially in today's economy. Uh, the condominiums have a lot of things going on down there. Kind of the, some of the same things that you're looking at with desert landscaping transformation. We are looking at some of the exact same things that I'm sure challenge you as a board. Uh, utilities, that's fun. Uh, but nonetheless, it's something that uh, it, it challenges our pocketbook at the same rate that it challenges yours. So that is something that's a constant challenge to us. Uh, improvements to the property, it's an aging property. so. Uh, deferred maintenance and and making the property look better are always a concern, and that's something that we're focusing on right now. Like I I know that you are. So I've been over there several times. What they're doing for the, the landscaping is beautiful. Great, thank you. I appreciate the that. Flowers and plants that you put over there are really really. We good. hope that you enjoy it as you're driving down mm -hmm. the hill and going out, yeah. so it looks nice at the same time. Yes. Maybe maybe it's a little bit uh, a long time coming in regard to some of these. Uh, conversions uh but at the same time we want to keep it nice and a park like atmosphere that we know is it really looks nice. it is part of the hallmark here okay. I, I have a question for you too mike uh on the the sheriff's substation uh we were looking at you know being able to have that in the office down there is that still going to be something that we could have happen or we'd love to have it happen uh, we, we put lines up in the office we uh we're roofing that building as we speak right now perfect timing yeah yeah a beautiful <laughs> desert uh desert and weather uh, but nonetheless, that, that's going to be taken care of. We do have desks, a microwave, and coffee bottle. Oh, okay, you and I have talked about it. So as soon as we can get them face to face and say, you know, be ready to move in. Okay. And if there's anything we can do to help push those guys that direction, let us know. We'll, you know, we'll try to. I think you and I will talk. Kick CNH, C or CHP closer, and we we love and, the uh, sheriff's I closer. I know we'd love to presence you and I'm sure Mount View of the Street. It, it's a win oh, yeah. for everybody. Definitely. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Next is the uh, Financing Credit Committee, Bill Aldrich. Good afternoon. Um, first of all, I, I move to uh, approve checks over a thousand for our operating and reserve accounts for January of 2023. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. I'd like to move to approve the finance and credit reports from our January 18th, 2023 meeting. All second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. I would like to add something uh, <clears throat> Eric and I uh, and uh, David Cadillo met before our last finance committee meeting, and we were examining some bills that we received that were quite alarming. Uh, we were, our gas prices were up, I think, 200%, and our electric prices were up 300%. So we chatted about uh, taking aggressive action to mitigate that. Uh, it's possible that the gas prices may come back down. I'm not sure about the about the electrical prices. Uh, with the electrical uh, pricing structure, there they've added a new uh, uh, range. I guess it's a super low. Uh, is that what it's called? Yeah, no, it's the the time frames that you know yeah. when you run electricity. It just replaces the old. Uh, there was two two rates before. This one is they call it the super low rate. This one might be seven thirty, I think, in the morning till five at night or something like that. So, but the point here is that I did some quick math before a meeting, and it just it's it's a serious issue. Uh, I asked if if we could put together a, a plan to mitigate this, 
uh, and uh, some of the items that we came up with, of course, to doing an energy audit, and that's, that's pretty straightforward as well. Uh, one of the things that's a, whoops, excuse me, one of the things that's a real, uh, I guess, gas uh, consumer is our pool heaters. They're, they're, well, we talked about this over and over. They're 500,000 kilowatt pool heaters that are 82% efficient on their best day. And they're, they're, you know, six, eight years old. So they're probably not very efficient and they they consume gas uh, like crazy. So one of the ideas is to, to look at getting, uh, you know, the 96% efficient eaters in place of a smaller size, they'll consume less gas, of course. Also with the consider looking at putting a cover on the pool, it may be labor intensive to put it on and take it off, but we're, we're heating up the, uh, it's cold out there. And so all of that steam that's coming off the pools, it's just a really, really a, a bad situation from, from that perspective. Um, the other thing was that we talked about, uh, you know, perhaps to hit the you know, sweet rate for the, this, I think it's seven cents a kilowatt. I think that's what it was in, uh, in the day. And, and of course we water at night and that's when the, the electricity is the most expensive is to manually water. And, and with, if, I ran the number really quickly in my head and it looks like we're, if they truly are doubling, we're going to be about $350,000 in the, in the hole just for gas, just for gas and electric. So it would pay us or behoove us to examine manually watering during the day when golfers are not on specific holes. And you've all seen that before in different golf courses. That's, that's what they do. Uh, and we actually do that here at, as, as well. In addition, uh, uh, Raphael was uh, was only watering last month. That uh, he, he reduced his uh, watering rate by forty percent, and 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 what actually happened was even though the building came out, we were a little bit more than what our normal bill is, and we cut the water by forty percent. So anyway, it's a real issue, and uh, Eric has uh, signed up to take that on as an action item, and that's all I have. Okay, the question, please. For residential rates, electric is lower overnight. Are you saying that for commercial, it's higher? Not anymore. No. Yeah, but I have an all electric car. It started, car. It started just, just now. now. It started January. Yeah, January it just started after the new year. Oh. And, and I, think, it comes summertime. I think there may be another caveat to that, too. Mm -hmm. and Eric will check into this, and that is that we are an industrial user, wow. and, and they expect us to, to continue with our times of consumption because it, it makes X amount of, of dollars for them. So that's one thing that we'll have to address as well when he talks with the, uh, with the uh, Edison. Okay. All right. Thank you, Bill. Yeah. Um, golf committee, Steve. Julia, did you, did you want to talk at all on the, on okay. the golf committee stuff? I've got a, Shall we say a couple items? Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. Well, you should say over there. Where is it? Oh, over there. Over there. Over there. Over there. Oh, yeah. Always working. Well, I have the draft of the calendar for the next year. There's not too many changes. The court course is going to be closed for overseeding from September 27 to November 5. So that's six weeks, almost there. The main changes that we have in the golf events are that we, the golf committee move the senior championship for the MGA and the WGA to the first week of January. So that will give us four weeks to start the second week of January with the President's Cup. There was an addition of the couples tournament and lunch on the month of February before the Super Bowl day. And after that, there was uh, no additional changes. Most likely everything uh, remains the same. So that's the draft that we have. And I understand that there is um, an issue with the closer, yeah. just to the closer, just for, for all the members to be here when we are closing the, the season. So that's the, this is the draft that you have in front of you. Um, any suggestion that you may have, I can take it to the, the golf committee. Okay, 
Just, just you know, the, the issue that stumped the committee this past month, um, and will probably be decided uh, in a week, approved at the market here, is whether to have the closing tournament and dinner on April 20th, which is a time that's very, very late for most of the Canadians. They, they usually are gone by the middle of April. And, or have it a week before on April 13th, which is the day, the Saturday before Easter. And so there was half the committee objected to having it on Easter weekend, half objected to having it on after the Canadians leave. Personally, I think we have it on Saturday before Easter because it's Saturday, not Sunday. If you happen to travel for Easter, well, that's, that's your problem. The Canadians will definitely be traveling the end of April. So I think it's, it would be nice to have them present before. Some of them are going to be gone by by that weekend anyway, but most of them I think will be uh, will still be there by by Easter. Uh, that's the issue, and if you have any input on that, contact your all committee member because uh, we'll be meeting on uh, next Saturday I think, to finalize that. Um, and, and, and if I could comment, the additional motivation to leave is the condition of the golf course, and I remember last year we had heavy. Uh, Heavy sanding of the greens, and it was not fun, and large holes, and it was uh, we left. Uh, I know a lot of Canadians left because, it, well, of course, it was yeah. you know that's what you that's where the money hits the road is money when you're on the green. So <clears throat> for me, that's a big a big issue. So if if they can delay the uh, the aeration and the sanding until uh, the later part of March or April or or even May, uh, more people will stay. Yeah, that's a, that's a spring thing. You want to do it before the temperature gets too hot for punching. You like this, and the greens will dry out. Um, the uh, tomorrow is the Sadie Hawkins couples tournament. It is a it's any two man team, team man, two individual team. I'm First playing team. with my son in that one, um, and he's going to go down 18 strokes, I think, in handicap to play with me. So we're in it for fun, not competition. I think. Um, the mark the club championships for men and women are both going to be the uh, first weekend in March, and uh, the Ryder Cup event is March 23rd, and that is the Canadians versus uh, the United States, the home team, and occasionally some Argentinians, and uh, mm -hmm. that will be a 12:30 shotgun followed by a dinner in the clubhouse, and uh, that will be on Chelsea to sign up for. It's a really fun event. I cannot make it this year, so we need some USA players to. Take my place. I have three doctor's appointments on that day. So, um, Mike Newman. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rob Stoyer killed me last year. So, question for the Sadie Hawkins for a tournament tomorrow. Is there a dinner afterwards? No. Yeah, it, it, there was originally planned to be. And they, I guess they made the decision not to have it. So. I think that's a missed opportunity for the club because I think you have about 76 people signed up for that. It's a Sunday. You come in, it's probably going to be a little cold or not, but at least have pizza or salads and whatever ready. Um, so, so the grill will be open, the bar will be open, so they, can, they could order from downstairs. Well, I suggested to Moose the other day that if they weren't having a dinner, to do a pre-order downstairs in the bar good because point. 76 people coming in all trying yeah, to that's a good idea. Or whatever's down there it's going to be worse than valentine's day yeah actually it's better if there's something like that that you could have sort of pre-done that could be the uh up the bar oh pizza that's right that's uh, you know yeah. pizza pizza by the slides kind of just have like a uh several pizzas out there you yeah. have pizza and a salad and you know something that you know, it doesn't involve a, a two hour wait for service. Or pre order in the bar. Pre order, sure. I mean, not in the bar, in the um, pro shop. No, I think that's, I think it's important that we not lose those leverage opportunities. Okay. Uh, uh, next up is uh, Green Committee. Okay. Um, I'll read Chester's report. Chester is out marking or setting up a golf course for a tournament uh, in the range. So. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, last month on the 28th, uh, and during a meeting, we approved the RFCA to change the 12-inch uh, gate valve, which uh, was not working, and it would not allow us to, 
to independently water uh, the number one hole, the number two hole, and the number or, uh, 18th hole. So it was doing it all at the same time. So this valve has been installed. It's very large. And uh, now we're able to, to uh, only uh, water the, the first hole uh, when we choose to do so. Uh, the shaved areas on hole number 10 and, and uh, hole number 17, the both of those holes were designed initially to have a, a lower cut on the hill. Uh, and I, I think the open question is, is that now we're, we're cutting it back like it, like it was designed for, except we don't know exactly how wide it should be. So they're investigating what the original intent is. And so they're checking with the original plans to do that. So, um, as we all know, if you hit it up on some of those hills when they stop here, it's it's difficult. So anyway, uh, so that's in that's in the works. Uh, and also, if you'd like to leave some comments, uh, fill out a comment and a, on a comment card and drop it off at the pro shop to, uh, to give your input on what you think about that. Because some people say, "Oh, that's not golf," and other people say, "Yeah, well, if that's the way it's designed, then that's way we should do it." But uh, if you could do that, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, on hole number 11, uh, as you've noticed, when you've golfed, is the green and gold tees have been switched. Uh, they discussed it with the MGA and the WGA and whether the uh, switch should be done. Uh, it will. It has been done and it will uh, require the, uh, the, the green gold uh, and tees to be uh, re-rated. So, uh, the pump station in, uh, enclosure, we have a, you know, the long standing issue with uh, those, uh, what are they called, variable, variable frequency drive motors, that's it. And they are emitting a very high pitch noise. Uh, and that coupled with, once the motor generates the noise, it follows that into the, uh, the pump. And, and so you end up with, with two noise makers. Uh, so the the initial quotes went out for a, an enclosure. Uh, it's about eighteen thousand dollars for a fully enclosed uh, with a hardy plank with a swamp cooler and two doors. So they need to cool it down uh, because it will be uh, quite warm in there. Uh, <clears throat> so they're they're working on that. Uh, they also you know there's an idea of, of this. If someone makes a building that you would basically drop over the top of the existing building, and that is uh, one way of, of uh, mitigating that uh, that noise. Uh, <laughs> except it may not be legal in California, so we're checking that out. Nothing's uh, legal in California. Okay, uh, FBH Four Magazine. <clears throat> There's a great article in the winter issue of uh, 20, uh, 23. It's graph by design. And it's by Craig Kessler. He's an SGA director of public affairs. The article is about a, you won't remember this, but UCR 17-8 and UCR TPG-3. And they're two new uh, hybrid Bermuda grasses. And <clears throat> they're developed by UC Riverside's Turf Grass Research uh, Department. And they're, they use 50% less uh, water. And they maintain their color in the winter, which is interesting. So uh, and now that we talk about our, our, our water usage and, and uh, electrical consumption to water our, our, our property, uh, this, this may be very, very attractive to us going forward. Uh, it's supposed to be commercially available sometime in uh, next year in 2024. So we're still out of ways. Uh, so apparently these types of grasses are the future of of golf course grass in Coachella Valley going forward. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, House Committee, uh, Judy Grant will be giving uh, Wendy's report. Right. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, uh, Wendy is sick and couldn't make the meeting, so she asked me to read this for her. Yeah. Okay, Wendy is sick and couldn't make the meeting, so she asked me to read this for her. The February 1st, 2023 House Committee meeting was canceled due to lack of a quorum. However, we have co contacted two interior decorators at the request of the membership at the past Board of Directors meeting for color recommendations on the flooring and paint colors for the upstairs projects. 
color samples are in, and the committee will look at those at our next house committee meeting. Several complaints have come to me in the past week or so about the upstairs clubhouse not being cleaned, popcorn left on the floors and tables uh, and table for days, trash on the floor and trash receptacles in the women's restroom, empty tissue boxes sitting on top of the tissues dispenser, et cetera. On the golf course, in the bathroom at hole number three, the trash was between the wall and the toilet's water tank and all, the, all over the floor. I texted Eric and he sent someone out to clean it up. People are complaining about the smell of the carpet in the weight room in the gym. These are issues that the committee will be discussing and would like the board of directors to comment on what is happening with our housekeeping department. The Ollie session, which Eric already talked about, about the Coachella Valley is coming soon. If if you're interested in attending here at MLCC, you must sign up online. Look for links in the newsletter, on the Facebook page, and in the e-blast. And that's it. Thank you. All right, next up is uh, member communications. Sandra. All right, Sandra, Sandra Rodriguez. Sam Sandra Rodriguez. And today is actually one year since I moved into this community. Oh, oh great. It's kind of a fun place to live. Um, I left Baltimore and New York a couple days ago. It was actually warmer there <laughs> than it is here, except for 20 minutes of snow flurries in New York, which is kind of crazy. Uh, member communications committee has had two major projects going along in the last several months. The first is the newsletter, and I'm hoping all of you are seeing the newsletter and finding it useful. And uh, I'd like to give a shout out to Aaron, who has figured out how to make the pages flip and how to put in all the extra stuff in the link. He's really done a great job. As far as that goes, and for the most part, it is proofread and proofread, um, along with the menus. Secondly, is the new website. I've been here a year, and I've been hearing about a new website coming on, and in fact, it is coming on. It should be live and ready to use mid-March. One of the things that we need to be aware of is that we will all need to re-register because it's a different carrier, like going from Verizon to T-Mobile, that sort of a thing. And there will be instructions that it would come out probably in the newsletter, but also separately on how to re-register. It's going to look a lot the same as we make some improvements to it. It's already got a lot of improvements in it, but to make the transition easier, it's going to have a similar look and a similar flow. And then as and it's probably going to have some problems. We've all been through new systems and such. It probably will have some problems right out front. It's been tested a lot. David Cadillo, who works in, in accounting as your controller has worked a great deal on it. Eric has, and they've been kind enough to let me be involved, which I've really appreciated. I, I have done some implementations before. Um, and then as it gets going and we smooth the bumps and you let us know where you see an issue, then we're going to also go to the committees and see if the committees and the clubs have what they want on their pages and what's going on. So it is a continuing process, but it should be up mid-March. Uh, if you're not getting the newsletter, if you're not getting the menus and such, please let Erin know and she'll make sure that you are. Thank you. I'd like to I'd like to add one thing. Um, as far as the committee is concerned, if you know anybody that uh, wants to become a member of the uh, member communications committee, please have them put in their uh, their resume. Uh, we're looking for people. Uh, I can tell you, Sandra, between Mari, Sandra, Aaron, in there. We've got nothing but but uh, praise, and I and I really appreciate their hard work. This new website is going to be great, but there may be some some baby steps along the way. That's what they said about the old website. We do this every year. We change websites every year. What's up with that? We haven't changed the the website, uh, Hank, in past five. I thought, I thought we changed it when Poppy was here. We changed it when Brian was here. Now we're going to change it again. No. Yeah. Sure no. seems like it to me. No, we haven't <laughs> haven't changed it, Hank. And it's time for a change. Well, we just, uh, just about every page is linked to make sure it's working. Yeah. So I, I think the biggest change we, we have coming is we use this company called Ivamax that's been taking care of the website for us in the background of it. Now Jonas has the capabilities. Now uh, we're going to be using strictly Jonas, not a second company, a second vendor in this uh, program. So we're going to be able to do all the changes and everything through Jonas, which we didn't really have the capabilities to, and we'd have to send everything. So Jonas, our main, uh, uh, what we use for everything for point of sale and everything else now, is the website's going to be hosted by. So, and this was this started back in uh, February of last year is when they started working on a new website. So maybe that's when you heard of a new website. It just never got implemented. 
and now we've done. I got to tell you, we do a lot of website stuff around here. It's crazy. Well, we really haven't, Hank. And that's the problem. Like every time you hear something, change your website, add this to the website, we're doing new communication. I'm just asking. I mean, it just sounds, it sounds pretty crazy. That's all. Well, our main our main interest is to be able to get communication out to our members. So whatever we got to do in order to improve that, I think is uh, going to be a benefit to all of advantage of the new technology. Well, exactly. Yeah, I, I just wanted to make a quick comment that we we call it member communication, but I'm hoping this website can be an aid to us in promoting outside our membership. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm on Nextdoor all the time saying to our to our neighbors, to our local neighbors, non-members, come up and, you know, have breakfast at the club, come have a pizza at the club, come out to the, the bar lounge, come to Monday Night Football. I'd like to be able to, to have a quick list the website and have there be menus and calendars and time and information there. It's a great it's, marketing tool. Quickly, just on the face of the web, a web page for, for our neighboring community. As well. <laughs> Plus, we'll be able to, uh, uh, once it gets rolling, we can put surveys in there for the whole community. So it, it has its advantages because it's basically in-house now. We don't have to send everything out. So we can do it in-house. So it, it should be a lot faster, cleaned up. You're not gonna see board meetings from five years ago, <laughs> okay, which we're on the, on the website. And those of you who use the app, the MLCC app, that also is going to have some changes because it points to the old website and there is old information there too that needs to be updated. So right. the app will also uh, get, get an update. Right. All right. Okay, uh, cops. Uh, Larry Caribou. Okay, we had our meeting back on February fourteenth. Uh, um, our January miles, six hundred and seventy-six miles a week patrolled, and we had uh, one hundred and twenty-three hours. There's seven person patrolling, and our cum total for since we started, and um, we're approaching eleven years in April, and we were uh, patrolled. Uh, 106,000, 106, 107 miles in our, our patrol car here in Mission Lakes. It's quite an accomplishment. Uh, we're still finding several garage doors open during the, our, our patrolling time. So I think it's getting better, but we still pop open. So you know, we just keep uh, letting them know that they're open, but we have some people that are not home. And we've had some some places where we we uh, we went and closed the garage door ourselves. Our, our citizens on patrol first. Anyway, uh, sheriff's report was uh, there's been several vehicles left unlocked, and uh, of course that just gives the the, uh, the burglars and you know just to go through and and try and find things in there. And it's just a reminder not to leave anything valuable in your in your car. Especially don't leave it unlocked. That's the key thing. And then another thing, uh, Deputy Austin reminded us that if you suspect that there's drug sales going on or manufacturing, there's a direct link to the drug task force uh, on the Riverside County website. So you can always call them and uh, and let them know where it's at, and they will definitely investigate all reports. So it's really uh, interesting to know that. I'll just touch on a few of the incidents. Talking about uh, garage doors. Um, we were in Warwick, we had one where the garage door was uh, found unlocked and the phone number, there's no answer. Anyway, we ended up closing that one of our patrol pieces uh, was able to close it for them. Um, they had a report on a ring about partial thefts that seems to be getting pretty popular around here. And uh, there's a, uh, this one report was it was an older vehicle, probably a, a RAV4 that, been, that was been seen taking packages uh, on Warwick. So anyway, just one. And then uh, we had a, informed the uh, people on 9440 Warwick about their partial at their door 
this is one of the things that we kind of do just to let people know because when they drop them off they don't let you know it's there and uh so we we did it. there was a package on warwick and another one on troon another one on Durrell, and uh anyway and then there's a uh, a deputy was over on Durrell um uh, back on middle of uh, january there and and uh one of my uh one of my um troll people who's very familiar with the uh she was the ex-canadian uh, uh police uh, person anyway and it, was, it turned out to be a code four, which is everything was okay, but it was investigating it. So, and it was um, somebody decided to leave a refrigerator over on Durrell, and uh, it uh, it was kind of well, they don't have the old latches like they used to have on the doors, you know. I don't think it was really too unsafe, but uh, they felt it was kind of unsafe. But anyway, just made a report on it. Uh, I received a call from uh, the condos. Uh, a person over there said that there was a, a whole bracket full of uh, mailboxes, and they're all kind of listed, I mean, together. So it was around 11.30 in, in the morning, and I just kind of jumped in my car and went over there and took a look at it. And uh, apparently, he had tried to lock them. And anyway, I was able to lock them back up and, and close them so they were back to normal. But, I don't know, but all the mail was sticking in the slot, so somebody could have really cleaned up pretty good there. Uh, we had a problem with our patrol car last month uh, with our engine light on, and uh, once we we have to take it to uh, Palm Springs Ford now because they close the uh, repair shops over in Indio, so it's like you're going a pole when you take it there, and they had it there for like ten days, and anyway. We got it back, and uh, we're back in back in after after quite a lengthy time. Um, we had a report of a, a particular place uh, about uh, cannabis smell, more marijuana, over on uh, Warwick. And uh, anyway, it's uh, it's one of the ones that I think it's been turned into the town drug test force. So there's not much we can do until they do something about it. Uh, yeah, there was a, a over on um, Burroughs Court. Where's Hank? Is it you? Yeah. 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 He must have done something to this. <laughs> yeah, no. Huh? Anyway, yeah, there was a red audio, audio car over there with uh, expired license plates and flat tire and Anyway, we'd been there for about three weeks, and anyway, our, our patrol person called and reported it uh, to the H uh, Highway Patrol, and within a couple of days, it was gone. Whether they it was towed, but the car was gone. So, so it's just one of the things that we do. Um, <clears throat> I think that was pretty much it. Um, oh yeah, our next meeting will be on on March. 14th at 1.30, all are welcome. And one of our uh, patrol persons makes wonderful chocolate chip cookies and they're fresh out of the oven. And she brings them to the meeting. So uh, we'd like to invite anybody to come there and enjoy them cookies with us. And uh, thank you, you're all welcome for that. And uh, one other thing, uh, I'm hosting a, a pickleball clinic tomorrow, weather permitting. At one between one and three, and uh, here in the, in the pickleball courts. Thank you. That's it. Hey, Larry, I have one quest, quick question. Uh, is there a minimum age to go through the COPS program, get training, and all that? Uh, as long as you've got a driver's license, I believe that's that's all you need. It might be 18. Uh, I'm not sure, but I can check on that. My son's 19, and I was trying to talk to him. Too. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we can definitely right. use some uh, hey, tomorrow. And uh, so we were losing more than we we're, were gaining. So anyway, thank you. I, uh, I'd like to add a little bit, just kind of a tidbit. You know, when you say you had 106,107 miles on your on the cruises around our uh, HOA, uh, it doesn't sound like a lot because we we all have put a lot of miles in our cars, except that that is if, if we had a highway on the equator of the world, that's 4.26 trips around the world. So that's pretty impressive. Yeah.
Anyway, yeah, we we, we figured it out it's, it's like 11 mile radius going in and out of call us action in when we make our rounds throughout here. Great. So, all right, thank you. Okay, uh, next up is uh, Pool and Rack. Yeah, yeah, now right? We'll see. Yeah. 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 Two or three items I want to touch on. I want to save the most important one for last. So I do want to report on our fitness classes, which are doing very, very well. Our Monday, Wednesday, Friday, that yeah. class has had some all-time attendance records. We're, we're getting up to about 22 uh, persons in that class on those three days. And we've had some requests to add additional class to help Get some people out of there and, and do something else. And it's called a boot camp or a fitness plus class that we've had prior to the pandemic. And this class would be held outside and we be, would begin at seven o'clock in the morning on Mondays, Wednesdays. I took a look at our budget and we have enough money in that budget to add this class. So if we get six, eight to 10 people, at seven o'clock, it'll help mitigate the overflow of those 22, which are bumping into each other and, you know, creating some liability for your neighbor on that step. So that's a good thing. Um, we plan to, to have to keep this class until at least the end of March. And I'd like to try to go to April 15th when our snowbirds mostly go home and then we'll be back back to normal. Um, I'd like to also shout out to our pool and rec committee members because we have 10 members that have signed up come every month if they're in town and they have all all been followed mr caribou for example mr hagan miss holly king um it, it's a real pleasure to work with the committee members that want to do something and these people want to do something and have really helped out. We're moving forward on pickleball, bocce ball, lawn, lawn bowling, and we're even looking at darts for in here. So we'll see how that all goes. But they do get involved and they, uh, they're just a great committee and I'm very lucky to have them. Um, now, to my most important subject, and that is our swimming pool which has had some major heating problems for the last three or four months. And I've been involved with Pool and Rec in one way or another for the past 11 years, maybe 12. And during that time, we've been able to mitigate any of those issues and we just didn't have them until now. And I know there are reasons. Our equipment is aging. Bill mentioned that the pool eaters, they may be only I think it's six, eight, and nine years old. But when you consider how much they run, what energy they take, you know, their lifespan is not that much. And they're not running very well now at all. And when I look at, I look out on that golf course, and we spend what, 1.9, 2.1 million a year on our course to keep that going. And we have about, let's say, 400 golfers. Well, the rest of these people here at this club, need to have activities like that pool to occupy them, to be able to use. And we have many members in our uh, fitness classes that use it for their health. They have to. We have some that, that have special needs. We have some that have severe arthritis. And they're able to get in that pool during those classes and use it to help them health-wise. And that's suffered a lot. And we're at the point where you know, we can't go anymore like this. I've watched that thing fluctuate. I don't know where it is today, Eric, but last week was what, 75? So, yeah, so okay, so. Tuesday was back up to 80, and now it's 84. 84 so today. I, and you know, and people say that's still too cold. So I, I don't know how much farther we can go up with the cool. Well, back. okay, let me step but, in there because we've had unusually cool weather. It's been a cold winter this past month. And even in the best of conditions, 
even when it's 84 and we have this kind of weather, it doesn't feel like it at all. We just got to kind of tough through that. So you get it to 84, that's going to be good enough for the classes. Once they get going, we're, we're all right. But it's unacceptable the way it is. And as a pool and rec chairman, I'd like to make a recommendation to the board of directors that we, we move on from trying to fix it and piecemeal it. Even the building that it sits in, that's an old class two building that's original, the thing's falling down around it. But we need to replace that equipment, replace, not try to repair anymore, and get this thing back to the point where it wake, works the way it was designed to work. So that's my request to you, my appeal to you, and I hope you take it in consideration. Thank you. And, uh, Eddie, in addition, uh, the uh, not only is it inadequately designed that that pool house, uh, those parts are obsolete. I've been online looking for parts. You cannot find any no, parts. You can't. Uh, so, <clears throat> and it's amazing that we say they're only eight, nine years old. Uh, but you should see the list of heaters that have uh, uh, become obsolete uh, that are newer. It so they don't last very long. And also, if you go down in that in that uh, in that uh, enclosure down there, that building, uh, they're stacked right on one another and there are a, a ton of 90 degree uh, corners, 90 degree pipe corners. So if you're, if you're in the <laughs> hydraulics, uh, that is a killer of, uh, yeah. of flow of, right. of, of uh, any, any fluid. So that's, that's just really bad uh, to start with. We also need to re-establish uh, mm -hmm. our thermal warming grid that's above the cart, cart barn, hook mm -hmm. that back up and get that back up. Get it back up. I don't care if it's, you know, like, put three degrees in, it's a heck of a lot cheaper than, than uh, paying for the gas. Yep. Okay, so how many BTUs is that heater uh, putting out? 500,000. Okay, and what are you guys looking to upgrade to? Well, you have to size it accordingly, but uh, right, three thousand dollars. Excuse me, five hundred thousand BTUs is what each one of those three heaters is is right. uh, rated at. But we, uh, from what I understand, we can heat the pool with two. So, so if you do the math, mm -hmm. uh, and you're saving what 14 percent, uh, if if in fact they're rated at eighty two percent right now, so eighty two to ninety six. Uh, so there's a big there's a big savings there, but yeah. also now you're going to be able to downsize, uh, Hank. So you can well, downsize. we use the heater what a thermal solar, right? The, the solar is uh, eighty five percent usage, perhaps. Okay, no. that kicks in about what May or June. That's uh, those heaters. Those heaters are available all the time, man. It's not like they just go. Yeah, that's alternate when in the summer. You, you're not using those heaters in the summer when it's not 105 out here. It just it depends. Man. There's times we have to cool the water, but you know, cool the water, cool the water a little bit. Yeah, but you don't use the heaters, then obviously. But that's why we put that solar system in there. Right. Ideally, to mitigate the heater problem, right? To, to supplement to add, it. add to it. Yes. Supplement, not mitigate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, that. So, so what are you looking at? Fifty, hundred grand here. I'd like to speak speak to this too, if I could. Sure. Okay. Uh, you know, there's several members of the board that have identified the exact same thing that uh, that Eddie's articulated well today, and actually, it goes a little further, Hank. And you, if you surveyed the situation with your background, any any boiler maker, any pipe fitter would go in there and look at what we've got and, and just say, this is a cobbled up nightmare. And we've identified the fact that we've got to double, double the space, in my opinion, in that mechanical room in order to quit confusing that water, get it ran, streamlined, get the new boiler systems in place, go state of the art on everything because we've identified the fact we can't ever put this membership through this again. There's just, like Eddie said, there's way too many people that that's the number one amenity that they use. And I don't see $100,000 getting this done. But if it costs $200,000, I'm going to lean hard on everybody that we spend $200,000. But we're not going to put this membership through three or four months without this amenity again. And, and I think the, the members of the board that I've talked to are absolutely committed to what you heard from Mr. Baxter. Thank you, Eddie. You're welcome. 
Thanks, yeah. guys. Appreciate it. A comment to Eddie's first point. Member Communication Committee also put out a member update form to all of you guys. You got it in your invoices. You got it in the newsletter. You should have gotten it as a blast. And one of the purposes is for the food and rec commun uh, communication is how old are the are there kids? Are the people who are here year round? So that you can, yeah, right. can can do that. So if you haven't filled out your member update form, or if you know people who haven't, that's the purpose of it is to make sure that we know who we have living here now. I'm a year round. Don't know how many there are. But so that you guys have a, a, a firmer grasp on what kinds of activities and things that pool and rec should be going for. And just to add to that, House Committee and Pool and Rec Committee have met together because there's so many things that we cross over on. And that's just the nature of the beast. And if we, we meet on a regular basis, then we can work together towards some of those goals. It makes life a lot easier. Yeah. All right, next up would be future planning committee. That's Bill Anderson. Okay, we had our uh, first meeting of the Future Planning Ad Hoc Committee on February 7th. Um, the first topic of discussion, we spent a lot of time in the bylaws going over the reserve funds and uh, how they can be spent and how they cannot be spent uh, as far as the existing facilities and infrastructure. We also spent a little time on the uh, reserve fund study that is mandated to be done on a uh, basically a yearly basis. And it was noted that the study that was posted on the internet is not up to date, but one of the things on these studies is that a, a physical inventory must be made of our, our facilities and our infrastructure. In other words, the uh, the survey company must physically inspect like our heaters, our air conditioners, the roof, uh, the flooring, uh, the parking lot, so forth and on should be part of our study. And it needs to have a physical, a physical, um, uh, I guess, uh, uh, visual inspection of those buildings instead of just saying, well, uh, the books say that everything's okay. We, don't, we didn't do a study. We didn't do visual inspection. But we don't know from um, uh, the study that was done three years ago whether uh, that inventory that's on the uh, five year or 20 year plan is even even exists or it doesn't. So anyways, we recommend that that uh, uh, physical uh, uh, inspection be done with the studies. Uh, we talked quite a bit about future uh, the future of remodel or reconstruction of this clubhouse in the end. Uh, this, this facility is over 50 years old. Uh, we don't know exactly how old it is. It's never been, we have no plans. Uh, we have uh, no uh, archives to tell us what what uh, went into building this building. So it was determined that uh, a structural evaluation needs to be performed on this building and also the end. And that was uh, a motion was put together by Kenny Grant and seconded by Gary Eastham to recommend that uh, uh, request and proposals go out for a uh, structural uh, evaluation of the building to professional register structural engineers. That RFP is being drafted. It's going to be reviewed at our next meeting on March 7th um, and then passed on to the general manager with a list of uh, uh, Coachella Valley uh, structural engineers uh, to seek proposals on that aspect. Um, we also discussed various types of uh, contracting methods that uh, we could utilize at this uh, uh, organization to deal with contracts. For instance, the upcoming full years and uh, things like that's a that's a one item that would really lend itself to design build through uh, mechanical contractors or a pool professional pool uh, um, heater contractors or there's all kinds of other ways to contracting methods such as best value or uh, CMC GM, PM, CMCG, and so forth. There's all kinds of methods out there 
that are available that are being used in the industry right now to protect to protect the uh, the club and the uh, uh, during the contract the construction projects. Okay, the other item that was discussed uh, in depth is the future of the sewer to I mean septic to sewer conversion project and how that's going to impact this clubhouse and the inn. Uh, right now, our effluent goes out of the uh, east side of the building, and it's extremely deep over to a septic tank uh, uh, over in the by the wash over here, where the end goes out the side where they've built a new uh, bathhouse or uh, uh, ADA uh, bath restrooms, uh, and it goes uh, you know they have its own septic tank. So the question is. How do we combine these two septic tanks to one commercial service or do we keep them split as two? And that, at our next meeting, that's going to be a topic of discussion. Uh, we're going to have guests from Mission Springs Water District, Marion Champion, the public relations uh, uh, manager, and also Eric Weck, the engineering manager, to discuss the service lines out of this building. And it's our understanding that the, it's in design now and that we're probably looking at two years down the road. That's why we need to look at the uh, dips, so, you know, hooking up to that sewer now, because it's not going to be a small price. It's probably going to be in the range of 150 to 160 thousand to put in a sewer service out of this building. So we're working on that. And the uh, the other thing that we wanted to, we're going to be discussing on the sewer uh, connection is the uh, public affairs and the impact it's going to have on the community and the residents, because that's going to be like a when, it, when this thing comes to fruition, it's going to be like someone dropped a bomb on this community when they when we go in to install the sewer line services and upgrade the uh, the um, water services and other services that are in the streets. So we hope that uh, future planning can work with the communications committee to start now, maybe within the next six months, a public. Uh, a public uh, awareness program to, to uh, so that we can you know get some people prepared for this. Some of the items are going to be safety during construction, getting uh, fire and ambulance to people, uh, getting getting access to their mailboxes, getting access to their, their garages is going to be very difficult. So there's going to have to be a lot of communication with the community on how to make this thing work. Uh, outside of that. Uh, our next meeting uh, is uh, March 7th at 1.30. And uh, we've got a good uh, group of people, nine people. And uh, I, this is gonna be a very successful committee. And our intent is strictly to facilitate uh, projects and work with other committees to make this a better community. Okay, thank you. Any cookies? <laughs> All right, uh, old business. Um, uh, one thing we need to do is uh, uh, extend the uh, ad hoc committee, uh, I guess, status for a future planning committee. Is that what you're uh, looking to change that? Yeah, I, it, it, it's my opinion that, that, that nothing needs to be done. That Dave Stanley said that you know the charter will be reviewed by the attorney and probably be approved in approximately 30 days. Some feel that that means that we only approve the ad hoc committee for 30 days. I disagree with that. I think it's ongoing indefinitely until we approve the charter to make it a full committee. Um, but if we want to make a motion now, we can clarify that. So there's no dispute. We can simply say. Uh, we will extend the ad hoc committee indefinitely until a charter until it's uh, charter is approved and uh, get a full committee status. Yeah, and I believe the board had the uh, ability to cancel it at any time. If it need be. Yeah, and the governing documents give us a list of committees that we shall have. It also gives us the power, as long as we're not delegating the board job to somebody else, to have advisory committees, we can do that. Mm -hmm. at will and we can change their charters at will so we're really not limited to that in any way 
we're sometimes I think we're making it too complicated. I'd like to move to extend the uh, ad hoc committee for uh, at least another 30 days or until we have the uh, charter completed. Do you want to do maybe like yeah, the, why not? the other? Yeah, and definitely or definitely until, until the charter is until the charter is approved yeah. and voted on. I'd second that. Okay. Any discussion on that? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. So be it. Uh, new business. Um, yeah. Uh, one of the things we need to do is adjust the uh, start and end dates to the committee. Um, and uh, one of the problems we have is, is that once we elect our new uh, board, that same month, we pretty much start the committees back up and over again. So we end up with the with a, about a month of downtime uh, where if we bump the committees to be renewed in April and the elections happen and, and uh, the new board is installed in March, we do not have any downtime. So um, if uh, I guess we do we have to do this in a vote of the members? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, no, when it comes after you vote on it, we'll post it for 30 days. But oh, okay, so it's uh, no, but I, no, I think it's still rate. it's you're changing. It's a rule and reg, or no, no, it's not a rule and reg. I don't believe. Um, it's a by law. Yeah, it might have to go out for a vote of the members. And That's, I think, what we were talking about. It's in the board of directors manual. Oh, we can do that. Currently, it says that they end on March 30th. Okay, so you can change your board of directors yeah. manual. Oh. We can do that um, very simply and yeah. get post for 30 days. Um, and Wayne can, um, well, we can do that. I mean, change it to April. Can, can, can we uh, look at a little deeper and, and instead of just postponing it for a month, but look at maybe some some changes that we could uh, we could bring forward to make the committees uh, uh, appointed in the 1st of April, uh, you know, maybe the 1st, for two weeks of April, and maybe the April meetings are, are are moved out a little bit to allow that those organizations to occur. Because in reality, we should be starting to request uh, applicants for these committees. I would think now, mm -hmm. and 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 in the month. I was going to say we're putting something in the newsletter. Yeah. Do that now. Yeah, it is. And and just as, as an individual and not a committee member sort of mm -hmm. thing. Why is this a charter th or a bylaw thing? I live in, in no, community. No, it's, 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 it's in the function of us. So we want to even yeah. look at the purpose of restarting and starting over again every year, where you may have a you know a continuing committee where maybe yeah. you uh, have the same kind of thing about who's the chairman, but not to have to restart every time. It seems to me that that is less efficient, especially if you have a month out. Well, which I realize you're fixing. But. Well, what they do is they allow people to. Um, you know, basically the whole point was to kind of re re up the committees, but you you can keep the same chairperson. I mean, it's just you can you know that so person's going to come up and be it's be selected to. It says in the BOD manual that the idea you don't have to adhere to it, but the idea is to bring maybe be fifty percent of your old committee and bring fifty percent new in, so mm -hmm. that you continually have. New people, if people are applying, mm -hmm. that's the other thing. Um, so that you have a mixture, so you have new ideas and not just a group of people all the right. time that do the same thing. Thank you. Thank you. Voting right. numbers and fifty percent. Right. Not voting numbers. Correct. That's, what they, yeah. that's correct. And 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 yeah, you know, like you said, they're trying to bring new blood in, get people in. If that happened, you could. I signed up in August, or I, you know, whatever it, it suited my purposes mm -hmm. and my needs and budget. I think we're putting it from my perspective. I think we're putting an artificial demarcation on something that should be organic and flowing. I don't think you're going to redo your advisory committee every year because you're going to lose the information and, and, and the the um the tech and all the things that you wanted to have for it. You know, people could come and go on this. Well, and they do, it's just they do the selection of the chair people and the voting members once per year, and that's when they do it typically. That's a different statement than reforming your committee. I, 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 you know, that there's, that's true. And, and we, you know, as the finance committee went along, we had some people drop off and some people come in and it's just a matter.
Uh, different kinds of process. Yeah. yeah. Why? I mean, those 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 people uh, they're on the committee until they're not on the committee. <laughs> I only found out by accident in, in a meeting that that was the it's, case here. Yeah. It's the chair and the uh, the uh, accommodation of the recommendation to replace fifty percent of your voting members with 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 uh, alternate members that have served and gained knowledge. And that's uh, and what you're trying to do there is, is bring along people in the in the different uh, that have different experiences and different uh, education and different backgrounds and bring them on so we have newer ideas and we're and we're representing a bigger cross uh, reference of our of our uh, membership. Yeah, I think Jim. Ideally, all the committee chairs this month of of March, because uh, most of the committee meetings are the first couple of weeks, they should be encouraging their committee members to sign up and do a new application so that you guys can have that ready for whoever's your new secretary. And technically, because the, the board meets on the 25th, I guess, the new board. So if you could have a meeting before the end of March so that you can select or vote on your chairpersons and the voting members of all these new committee members, then you could see that new committee in April. Typically what's happened in the past is April or whatever the month might be is an unofficial month where you continue with uh, committee meetings, but it's unofficial business. Mm -hmm. And then that bridges you into when you guys can vote on who the voting members will be and who your chairpersons will be. And then you start off again in May. Exactly. There, there is going to be an announcement in the newsletter. There is the new, the new form, the updated form, because the one that was out there was not the updated one. Aaron took care of that. And so that'll be in the newsletter. It can, depending on cost and time, and such, you could go out with the invoice for March to everybody to go on. Like we did with the member update, I don't know if that would be helpful or not. But if you want everybody to be, those who don't read the newsletter, those who don't go to the website, that's, that's another yeah. place to go. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And that's why I, I say I think we can modify what we do at the end of March and the first first week of, of uh, April. These committees should be established. We should we can have an, uh, an open meeting uh, to we, can, we have to have an open meeting to vote on the chair people mm -hmm. and the voting members and the alternates for every one of these mm -hmm. uh, committees. So uh, it shouldn't be a <laughs> it, it shouldn't take a month. And to do all of that, and like you say, it's kind of a perpetual uh, uh, committee. And I know a lot of people, the finance committee, will you know that's what they like to do. And, and so, uh, and the other problem that you have is that uh, you know once my term is up uh, on the board, which is the 20, 25th at two o'clock or whatever it is, uh, I'm I'm no longer the treasurer. So you don't really have a treasurer to run the meeting who's automatically the chair. So. You can't uh, have an unofficial month on that. It, well, <laughs> it's it's difficult. So that's why I say let's just let's look at it a little deeper and, and maybe come up with a plan of, of organizing it so it's just not such a uh, a pain every year. Well, maybe a smart idea would be like you said, just you know, after we seat the board, then uh, one week after have an open agenda meeting, yeah. and that would be when all the chairs are voted upon, and then we accept them and then also the other members and we don't then you're only down for yeah. seven days we don't even miss it not even that really and the first mm -hmm. meetings are probably the green committee and uh, what's house committee house committee, house committee. House committee. Yeah. Yeah. you need to pick your liaisons too and then the, you pick your chair yeah and then the chair is normally the person that picks the voting members and then the board well the board approves the chair first and then the chair picks his voting members and then you approve that yeah, so what we'd want is you could do it. basically be prior to that meeting, if we could in an executive session get all the information, yeah. then we can go over all that yeah. and then come to the board meeting and have everything ready and have the liaisons picked out and go from there. My son only got in trouble in school once in his many, many years, and that's because I taught him that the answer, we've always done it that way, is not an acceptable answer, which he said to the teacher, right. <laughs> which is why I was in, in, the, in the meeting. But the idea is that we get so high bound, especially if it's something that we can change. If it, you know, it's not a David Sterling issue and all of that. We don't have to always do things the same way. And that's one of the things that if, if I have a goal here, it's to see us grow and evolve. 
And that sometimes means we don't do it the same way. No, that's these are good points, and this is something that we want to change. The only change that really needs to be in the next month is finance. All the rest of the committees are advisory, but finance does have to meet. But the rest of it, if you kind of have a physical meeting or they want to come together, they can, but it doesn't always have to be a position. Yeah, and according to David Sterling, the one committee we absolutely have to have is ACC. If you yes. read them, so, yes. you know, there's no choice of not having that. So, putting it out there to think a different way. All right. So, and, and my also, it's part of that. Uh, if you know the finance committee is different, but if uh, you know if Phil, you know if someone else is going to be in the chair, he wants to be able to hand that over rather quickly and 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 to educate the incoming uh, person with with what that the uh, scope of, of the uh, the committee and the finance committee, of course, is is uh, I, I want to hand off. I've got a lot to hand off, and that that individual. Um, uh, can do that and get his feet wet. I can. We can go through the first meeting together, but with that uh, new treasurer, uh, it's it seems so smooth that way. <laughs> yeah. I don't see any issues. So as far as the board goes, um, all the liaisons um, when we go to our next committee meetings, uh, we're going to request that we get all the applications and um, explain to them basically what we're going to be doing. Yeah. So that way we can go ahead and follow through with that. And uh, we'll just make the schedule. We'll get together with you, get the scheduling set up for the executive session and the open meeting the week after the um, election. Election meeting. Yeah. So, yeah, good, good stuff. Yeah. All right. Um, next thing we have is we need uh, to put forth the approval for the first tee of Coachella Valley. Um, they would be basically going from a start date of uh, uh, April 17th, 2023. It's a six week program. It'd be Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, between three and 5 p.m. So it's not really gonna affect uh, too many golfers unless you you know, wanna go to the driving range at 3.30, you're not gonna be able to do it on those particular days. But actually they asked for two, uh, they asked for two spots. On the driving range, so they're not asking for a lot. And oh, okay. for the most part, they use just foam balls and things like that when they do do golf. Mm -hmm. But you know, the, the really the enlightening of this is is life lesson. Yeah, oh, yeah, this whole class. No, I mean, yeah. So the golf is sort of secondary. So I think it's more to keep their attention span. Oh. The chipping area, and like they said, they just one portion of the chipping area is fine. Everybody else can chip. Yeah, um, but we'll have chairs out there, and it'll probably be on the other side of the parking lot. I did offer. You know some of the rooms up here, but they said no outside is best for the kids. So yeah. unless they change the lives and what they think. Yeah. So the six weeks is maybe two days a week, mm -hmm. depending on how many kids they get. Yeah. And probably Tuesdays or Thursdays they recommended, and then it was from three thirty to about five. But anyways, yeah. whenever they get out of school. So um for that six six week period. Well, I personally think it's a great look for our club. So yeah. you know, I don't see any negative coming out of it. <laughs> Supporting yeah. first tee. My son did uh, four years of first tee from the time he was like six, seven years old to uh, to ten, and uh, he's a terrible golfer. <laughs> but but one thing I'm really proud of is that you know when he he gets to the he has a routine. You know he gets to the first tee, he shakes hand, introduces himself to the oh, members nice. of his group. You know on the 18th hole, he That's takes cool. off his hat. Uh, and he shakes hands with his, he, he's got all those rituals that they teach him. He knows always to, he, to uh, you know, fix his all mark, replace his divot. I mean, he does all those things. I wish they would have given him better golf swing, but they did make him a sportsman and a gentleman on sports, which I'm most proud of of all. It's a great program. All right. Um, yeah. So, uh, can somebody make a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve uh, allowing first year of Coachella Valley to uh, use our facilities for that good session. Right. Right. Um, obviously, we've had discussion. Uh, we have any other discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. It's good to know. I should add that uh, it, it, it's also going to give an opportunity to our uh, golf shop staff if they have uh, so many kids that they'll uh, the first team 
can be paying them to help out with these these classes as well. No, right. All right. Um, uh, we have a. I, we don't have any new ones, do we? But but the uh, one portion of what we did last month needs to be read in open session. Uh, just those APN numbers. We have um, a notice of defaults uh, approved by the board last month to read into the record today. Uh, APN number six six one one four two zero one three six six one one four one zero zero five and 661-122-016 um, have those that you want. All right, that is all. Okay, um, Sam, pick a number between, I don't know. One and 16. Eight. Yeah. <laughs> Eight, okay. Uh, Larry Caribou. Larry Caribou. Larry, Larry. Larry. Check that book. I couldn't take it because <laughs> I saw the paper. <laughs> I'm the rule of 80 days. All right. Well, thank you guys. Meetings adjourned. And uh, watching your newsletter for a vote. You get to vote on the name of the new newsletter. I think 20 or so. And I hope you guys have to pull one out.